I welcome you to this flimsy structure. <laughs> what if we all died here? It's not fun to think about, but it's easy to think about. Would it be so bad, folks, if we, this, these, a lot of these questions are rhetorical? <laughs> what I'm doing right now is known as a monologue. <laughs> Where are my Greek fans at? <laughs> folks, we all have to die at some point. Oh, sorry we all get to die at some point. <laughs> That's important to remember. We think of it as this burden, but sometimes, like let's say, you're trying to connect to a Wi-Fi network and it's just not happening, <laughs> and you're like, I wish I were dead in the ground. <laughs> Also the name of my Wi-Fi network. <laughs> Can I tell you a true story? One time I stumbled across a Wi-Fi network that was entitled, I Miss My Ex-Boyfriend. <laughs> Didn't they know other people would see it? People that were trying to download an episode of the Americans or whatever. <laughs> Legally. Not a torrent. I paid the money for the season pass on iTunes. But now, I was talking to you and then you reached in your pocket. Are you going to assassinate me? What an adorable assassin you would be. You got a nice neckerchief and you got a straw hat for fun. They called her the summertime assassin. Ladies and gentlemen, will the circle be unbroken? Will we all meet each other again in the afterlife? Not necessarily heaven either. What about hell? Maybe that's an aspect of hell we're not talking about enough is that you might run into some old friends. You're here too! because I had sex with your wife. Oh, you murdered your wife because you found out. What a couple of old Henrys we are. What a piece of work is man. I don't know why I keep folding my arms like this. This is very closed off body language. How many jets are above us right now? Do you all hear that roaring? It's scary, right? Remember how I was joking before about how we all might die here? Oh, those innocent times when I thought I was just having fun. They told me You'll go do your show at the Barbary. You'll hear the sounds, but you won't know what they are. And then later you'll be driven mad when you think of them, because you'll never know. You'll be driven mad like those who learn to play the pan flute. That's a real legend about the pan flute. That if you, you know what the pan flute is. It's, <laughs> yeah. Paul, we just came from the pan flute tent. Uh, maybe you didn't notice we all have goat legs. It is said that he who learns the pan flute and becomes its master will in turn be mastered by the pan flute at the price of his very sanity. But now I just heard Simon Laban of Duran Duran. That's how we pronounce it in the South. Hey, y'all go to see Duran Duran? He was playing.
playing the pan flute at his show. Is Simon Le Bon crazy? Will he have to change his name from Le Bon to Le... Well, I don't know French words for crazy. Why don't we know all the words for crazy? Who knows it? Are people saying foo? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Simon LeFou. <laughs> that is a lateral move. I think it's just as good. <laughs> Do you think that was on the board when he was picking out his stage name? <laughs> Let's see. Two top contenders are... Le Bon. Positive, I like it. Le Fou, though. Bit exciting. What's he all about? Might make French people nervous. Le Bon it is. Why are you all asleep, fellas? I told you we'd be at this all night. Roger. John! Mick? There's got to be a Mick in this band. Ian! Um... B Bill Sykes! What? There's no Dickensian characters in Duran Duran! An oversight, I'm sure. Well, me old Chinas! <laughs> It's time to get out there on that stage and show those people who's ugly like the wolf. Uh-oh, mates, I've got cockney disease. Put a pencil under me tongue. Now that's a joke, of course, because there is no cure for cockney disease. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneity Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is the show where I invite a special guest onto the program to have a free-form conversation with me inspired by a blind question submitted from our previous episodes. Yes, then I invite some improviser pals to join me for a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes inspired by some of the details to come out of my conversation with the special guest, and it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. <laughs> and now, like, God damn you, water bottle. Yeah, I know you're trying to help, but not now. <laughs> Introduce you to my friends from the world of make pretends. First up, Craig Kakowski! Kak Attackers! Craig, have a seat. Kak Attackers in the house. Craig, how are you doing? I'm fine, Paul. Now we're sitting very close to each other. Very awkwardly, precariously <laughs> on this stool. Can you, are you up there? Are you good? Yeah, I'm up there. Now, Craig, let's this put our... This is it. This is the way. Right? This is the way. <laughs> you, do you feel very centered? You were, you very were centered, clasping yes. your hands as if in a, a sort of Piven-like... <laughs> in a Piven-like manner? Think Jeremy Piven. Yes. Doing the praying hands, but then gesturing towards you. Because <laughs> he can't separate those hands he once they're can't. together. Yeah. yeah. Call back to the Colin Hanks episode. That's right. <laughs> for those listening at home, Paul, I just did creepy finger scissors. Is there a name for that move? There should be. CFS. Thank you. Craig, I understand you had a bit of difficulty getting here to outside lands. That's right, Paul. Uh, I was flying in a little later than you guys. I was coming in from Portland, Oregon. Uh, which... Uh, <laughs> no love for Portland? You're going to love our guest today. Um... <laughs> 
And uh, I was running. Oh, 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 my God. God. <laughs> Your sudden memory of a detail. Let me tell you about this. Oh, okay, oh. okay. <laughs> it was Foo, man. Trey Foo. Um, <laughs> to make a long story short, I got a police <laughs> escort onto the festival grounds today. Okay. My first career police escort. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. So... <laughs> Why did this happen? What were the circumstances where the police somehow got involved in this? I have no idea. They called my driver. My driver took a phone call. We were stuck in traffic on Fulton, uh, you know, ostensibly close to the venue, but so far away. And uh, they, he, I heard him having, I assumed it was with somebody connected to the festival or the venue. It turned sure. out it was the police. Police called my driver's cell phone, asked him to pull over. Then a cop car comes and uh, he's like, uh, get close to me and ride my bumper. Um, <laughs> and uh, and we did that. Wow! We rode him all the way in. Now, who do you think he thought you were? <laughs> Nick Rhodes, maybe. Andy Taylor, Roger Taylor, John Taylor. I don't know. <laughs> there is no Mick. There is a Mick Taylor. There's no. a Mick Taylor in the Rolling Stones. That's right. Maybe he was at that meeting. But not in Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Duran Duran. Sorry. Craig, have you ever run afoul of the police? And this made you nervous. Uh, I, I got pulled over recently for running a stop sign in Los Angeles. So, yeah. I, uh, I know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a ticket or did they let you go? They let me go. Come on, privilege. <laughs> No, I, I, I paid about 500 bucks in ticket, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. On the spot? In on cash? the spot in cash. <laughs> yeah. Officers, isn't there a way we can settle this amongst ourselves? <laughs> With the stack of hundreds I keep in my car? Yeah. It's the, no thief ever looks there. Nope. <laughs> Craig, go back there. Okay, thank you. Craig Kikowski, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready, adorable assassin? Tony Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Thank you. Hello, sir. Paul, I'm nervous. Tony, why are you so nervous? I'm nervous because I, I worry you don't, you're tired of talking to me and you won't have anything to say to me right now. What a curious thing to say. Because I just, I saw you 17 hours ago. Yes, right. And we've been talking for like two hours, just hanging out. We also, we have a, a very close familial text exchange with our cast in Bajillion Dollar Properties. It's true. So there's a lot of texting, and I'm like, no one, no one but my own husband deals with me that much, so I feel like you don't want to But he's still to hanging in there. Yeah. Because <laughs> legally, he got to. Sure. <laughs> But this is, our relationship is still very new. Okay. We haven't known each other. We haven't known each other a year yet, Tawny. That's true. Isn't that crazy to think about? People have tired of me, you know, much sooner, so. Now that's not true. Uh, it, okay. Have you had a friendship? <laughs> you had a friendship end where someone said, I'm done with this. I don't know that I was aware enough to hear them say that, but that was the implication. Tawny. Do you have low self-esteem? Well, not until right now. I kind of thought I was celebrating it. <laughs> what about what you said was celebrating it? Just like airing it in front of strangers. It seemed that... very like take back the night of it, you know? Do you guys agree? Do you feel like... <laughs> so then, Tawny, should I tell you I've gotten all... Of the, I've gotten everything out of this relationship I'm going to get. Yeah. And we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How will you then feel with this newfound sense of propriety? I mean, I'm still going to, like, bother you as much as I do. At least I'll just have a self-awareness about it. Right. I'll be like, I know we're not friends, but I've still got to ask you if we can share an Uber back from the airport tomorrow. <laughs> do you need a ride? No. Because <laughs> I'm taking Craig home. We, we live in different places, otherwise I would have asked you. I can get you halfway. Actually, the cops are going to get me. <laughs> Tony, do you think I used proprietary wrong earlier? You know, 
as you pointed out, our friendship is too new for me to have pointed that out. Um, but I, I had an inkling that it wasn't the correct usage. I wanted to say proprietary, but I didn't. I didn't trust myself enough to say proprietariness, which what? I don't. <laughs> Of or being proprietary. Okay, so what did you say? I said propriety. Should I just listen back to this and figure out what went wrong? Yeah, why don't you do that? <laughs> why don't you give this a listen in a few months? Great. And then <laughs> diagram it for Learn me. some things about myself and you. Mostly me. It's why I'm still hanging on. <laughs> Tony Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. Still hanging on. <laughs> oh, what a weird mistake that was. <laughs> hey guys, here's how many turns it takes you to get dizzy. Three. <laughs> that was astonishing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, little Janet Varney! <laughs> Janet, thank you for being here. Paul, thank you so much for having me. Let me tell you something. Thank you for bringing the show here. Because My pleasure. you guys, the producers, uh, the people. Uh, the, <laughs> just, <laughs> this is a moving speech you're about to hear. <laughs> take a moment. No, take it. Here's a young boy growing up in Philadelphia. <laughs> Janet and David Owing and uh, Cole Stratton, who are the producers of San Francisco Sketch Fest. <laughs> right? They're here somewhere. David and Cole. They're also curating the comedy for the Outside Lands Festival. Last few years. Yeah, we've been co-curating it with, uh, with another planet. Co-curate with another planet? Which, which planet? Putting it together side by side. <laughs> <laughs> the name of a company is Another Planet? Yeah. Do you think they did that on purpose to be confusing? Possibly. So that you would say things like, oh, we're doing this with Another Planet. And then yeah. me, a real rude, <laughs> I'd be like, go, 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 boo, 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 boo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they did it only in hopes that people would start to question whether or not we had contact with other life forms. If they don't answer planets. their phone at their office by going, Another Planet, man, <laughs> 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 That's what I would do. And I also throw in some beep boops. Sure you would. Sure you would. Janet, you maintain a residence here in San Francisco. False. That's right. You passed my test. <laughs> Janet? I already was worried maybe your finger wouldn't land on me when you were spinning around. There was a sense of like, I could pick any one of you. I pick you. We have several contest winners in the audience. Okay. All right. Um... You did maintain a residence here for many years. I True. All right. Whew. I stand in front of this door, and I always lie. <laughs> the other guy stands in front of that door. He always tells the truth. Was the doctor a woman? <laughs> the doctors can't be women. Women aren't smart enough. <laughs> Is that right? Why did someone cheer for this? I think she's serious. <laughs> and just in case. Janet, you saw Duran Duran today. Uh, that was fr I think Friday. Friday. Friday's one. Yeah, I, Nate. in truth, I was the one who outed Simon LeFou's uh, pan flute playing. That's right. Did you guys see any of that? That was like the most wonderful of anything, uh, except maybe like a tuba or a harp. Anything in that outfit of like white leather with three zippers right here to pull out a pan flute was shocking. I gotta say, I kind of want to see that tuba now. Well, maybe next time. To see Simon LeVon like wriggling into a tuba. Wriggling! <laughs> Well, I feel like the perfect song for the tuba to come in on is Union of the Snake. Yeah, yeah. Who do you want so me to... So we're agreed. But I think... <laughs> well, I think... It's Rio. <laughs> it would be nice to have an oompa version of Rio <laughs> that German people could enjoy for once. <laughs> they always get left out. Boo! And doctors can be women. Janet, you've righted the ship, and thank you for it. Woo, thank you. Little Janet Varney, ladies and gentlemen. We're already behind. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break. When we return, we will meet our special guest.
Yes. See you on the other side, you motherfuckers. Hey there. Al A. Peterson, the smooth criminal with a don't wake up your hotel neighbors, smooth jazz type of ad. Hopefully there'll be smooth jazz music playing behind me, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. This episode of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins is brought to you by CISO. Yeah, that's right. CISO. S-E-E-S-O dot com. The all-comedy, ad-free streaming TV service made for the serious comedy fan. <laughs> I bet that's you. CISO is stacked with new original series, quotable classics, late night, and stand-up specials. And let me tell you, they have hilarious original series that you don't want to miss. Something along the lines of Bajillion Dollar Properties. With Spontaneous Nation host, Paul F. Tompkins. Did I say Spontaneous Nation correctly? I might have added a Barcelonian lisp. Hey, what are you going to do? It's very late at night, and I've had actually too much sleep. It works both ways. Too much or too little, it can really cause you a problem. How about other original shows like Harmon Quest with Dan Harmon, the guy that created Community and Rick and Morty? Follow Dan and his team of comedian companions to the world of fantasy role-playing and improv comedy. You should really just go to CISO.com and watch it all right now. It's too difficult for me to explain. And remember that bajillion dollar properties I mentioned two minutes ago? It's Reno 911 meets Million Dollar Listings, a semi-scripted comedy about the cutthroat world of luxury real estate in L.A. Paul F. Tompkins, the host of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins, he plays the head honcho of real estate firm Platinum Realty and satirical hilarity. What does it do? I think you know. It ensues. CISO is also full of amazing stand-up specials from Brian Posehn, Wyatt Cenac, Rory Scovell, Matt Besser, and Big J. Okerson. That's just to name a few. There's probably four or five more, I bet. CISO has a ton of awesome comedy, so go to CISO.com and start your free trial today. That's right. We're giving you a month completely free. When I say we, I mean CISO. I don't work for CISO. I'm a professional criminal. I help people fake their own deaths and provide them with new passports. Okay, CISO.com. Start your free trial today. Hey, friends. Allie Peterson, the smooth criminal here, giving you one of my patented, quietly recorded in a hotel room late at night ads. Hey, gang. Today's show is sponsored by Howl.fm. What is that? Well, I'll tell you. It's like Netflix for podcasts. It's a bunch of podcasts, and you can pick and choose which ones you want to hear. Pay a small fee for it. Got a query? Need some life advice? Check out the new Howl original Questions for Lennon with the former rock and roll guitarist and frequent visitor to the Comedy Bang Bang podcast, John Lennon, played by Mike Hanford. Binge on six exclusive episodes of British Invasion Life Hacks. In addition to this new shows, in addition to this new shows, hey look, I may be groggy and out of it because of jet lag, but that is exactly what this says. In addition to this new shows, get exclusive access to more than 150 hours of original miniseries and audio documentaries and over 100 comedy albums. Go to howl.fm slash spont to subscribe to Howl and start your free trial. Now you gotta go onto your computer and do it from there. If you want to get all the benefits, get that discount, get that special promo code, don't do it on your phone. I know we want to do everything on our phones these days. But if you do too much on your phone, people can track you. And in my line of work, that's bad. I All the people that I help fake their deaths and give them new passports and new lives, I tell them, don't get a phone. If you do get a phone, get a flip phone. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Go to howl.fm slash spont, S-P-O-N-T, to subscribe to Howl and start your free trial. If you sign up for an annual plan, you save 40% off the regular price. That's a full year of Howl for just $34.99. This deal is available for a limited time, and you can only get it on the web. Go to howl.fm slash S-P-O-N-T to get a one-month free trial and the opportunity to get a discounted annual subscription for a limited time. That's H-O-W-L dot F-M slash S-P-O-N-T. Tell them Al A. Peterson sent you. If there's a box that says, how were you referred to our site? If there isn't, don't bother. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation. Welcome back. You didn't go anywhere, and neither did we. Ladies and gentlemen. 
and gentlemen, it's time to introduce our special guest. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Fred Armisen. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Hi, Paul. We haven't seen each other in a long time. It's been ages. It's nice to see you again. Always nice to see you. Uh, Paul is one of the funniest people I know in my in my whole life. That's always, very nice. Always so funny. In your whole life. In my whole entire life. <laughs> it's been a good life, you know, when I started. Uh, <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah, what are you I'm, holding? I'm a baby. Oh, you're holding yourself yeah, yeah, as a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How weird would that be to be holding yourself as a baby? <laughs> so, would you recognize yourself? Would you know that that was you? Like, that's me. Oh, like somebody <laughs> tricked you? Yeah. Like, oh, would you hold my baby for a moment? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have the same nose. This is crazy. Then you would think I'm, I'm so narcissistic. Yeah, you think yes. this baby looks like me. <laughs> It will turn into me, the real me. <laughs> but at an accelerated pace. Yes. So within Quickly. a year. Yeah, it will just. The baby's caught up to you. Yeah, and then there's two of us. <laughs> and there can be only one. Yes. Fred, I have a question for you. Submitted by our previous episode's guest. Are you, are you curious as to the identity of our previous episode's guest? Definitely. Well, then I would direct you and the oh. listener to the Spontaneous Nation archives at howl.fm. <laughs> Hours of listening pleasure. <laughs> Fred, here's the question. <laughs> Do you consider cheeseburgers to be a part of the sandwich family? Oh. <laughs> um. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let this sink in with the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we just reopened the Warren Commission. <laughs> it's a that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, now the key part of the question is part of the family. Mm -hmm. So, so you can't misconstrue the question. The question is not is a cheeseburger a sandwich. The question is is it part of that family? Right. Okay. So my initial answer is no, they are separate because a sandwich ha has its sort of own category because mm -hmm. that's like sandwiches are slices of things. It's slices. <laughs> True. Right? Uh, By and large. Yes. Sometimes it's a pile of things <laughs> just slapped onto a bread and then you put other bread to hide it because it's disgusting. Once, a, <laughs> once in a while, you, you're right about that, once in a while. But uh, a burger is, it's the meat and it's, it's uh, sort of patted down. It's, it's, it's like a meatball, but it's squished down. So, so the answer at first, like, no, 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 it's not. But listen, but at the same time, it, it's in the family because the family is that of which has bread on both sides. So they are related. They're a cousin. They're a cousin to the sandwich. They're in the family, but it is not a sandwich. That is my answer. Yeah. Then I must ask this question. Yeah. Is a hamburger a sandwich? <laughs> it's in the same... It, 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 cheeseburger... Fred, you're hold dodging on. the question. Hold on, hold on. I'm not going to let you wriggle out of this. At this time, I cannot answer because... <laughs> bear with me here. At this time, I cannot answer that. All I can say is that a cheeseburger is within the family. And a hamburger, at this time, I am so sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I, as, I'm sorry, as soon as there is an opinion, this is all I can say right now, that will, that will come into play, I, and, and as soon as we find out, absolutely, you'll be the first to know, and we'll gather here. At the moment, I cannot answer that question. I'm sorry about that. So you will say that a cheeseburger is yes, in the family, but the a family. hamburger, I cannot absent answer, cheese, I, you I'm, will not say I, definitively in front of this audience whether that hamburger is part of the sandwich family. I've said it again. I, I will say it. This is the last. I, I've already addressed this. You, if you'd like to rewind and listen to my answer from before, go ahead and do that. But at this time, I am so sorry. I cannot do uh, uh, other other questions. Fred, let's cut the shit for a second. 
John Hodgman, previous guest of this show, has yes. said, because there's a, a, a great debate raging on as to whether or not a hot dog is considered a sandwich, and he makes a great point that even though there is components that they share, and I think that same is, is true for a hamburger, you would never cut one in half to share with someone else or to eat in two sittings. <laughs> Like a sandwich, you would cut a sandwich in half sometimes. Absolutely. The, the key to this, if you ever have this argument in the future, is the silhouette. And don't, by the way. <laughs> but don't. But it's the silhouette. So a sandwich, it appears, if you saw a shadow of it, you, you know. But a hot dog, this, this is where, so a slice of pizza, hot dog, burger and sandwich has a sort of, there's this happening. For the listener, uh, meaningless hand gestures. Fred, let me ask you this. I don't know if they're meaningless because I think from the sound of the audience, you could sense what was happening. Right. Well, yes. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> when you were a kid, would you make yourself sandwiches? Yes. Peanut butter and jelly. Um, did you uh, ever do a triple decker? Oh, no, I never did a triple deck. Why didn't you? I, you know, when, you, when you're a kid, you, the level of the things you think you can make, it's very limited. That's true. You know, you're sort of like, this is a sandwich, and you get, you just, that, you eat it right away. Right. So, it's not until you're in your 20s that you're like, hey, I'm going to add this, I'm going to add another layer of bread. That's, that's a little more evolved. When I was a kid, when I was a little kid in grade school, I, I don't know what made me think to do it, but I made myself a triple decker peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I still can remember the feeling of pride that I had like I figured this out yeah. all you do yeah. is, that is another keep bread? going yeah. you, had, yeah. you build yeah. another tier on yeah. top and then bread but on the evolutionary scale, you know, it's how we, uh, how we saw making buildings. It's how we saw building things. Sure. You're just using that part of your brain. I think that's, uh, I think it's uh, a huge, no. no, hold on. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That was just, for, I'm, not, I'm no. just applauding. We're not going to, yeah. He was not, that was not That was not for, I'm so sorry about Mr. that. That was just Mr. Fred, what, what's like a revelation you can remember from a kid? Like a simple thing that, of course, to a child would seem like, you know, a, an epiphany. Um, I, this is, uh, this almost could be the opposite of that, but like, oh, the, okay. but, but, but here, <laughs> I'll accept but, that as well. But this is kind of an epiphany where, where I, and this is more like, I think toward, towards my teen years, discovering that Alzheimer's didn't mean old timers, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where I was like, absolutely, old timers is easy. And then I'm absolutely. like, what? It's not, they're not really, <laughs> like, I, pardon me for thinking that that's what it was, that there's a doctor named Alzheimer's. That was the, so that's almost the opposite where it's not a revelation it's a sort of disappointment <laughs> did you yeah because it should be yeah it's like old, old timers do you did you have words that uh, what we call the passive vocabulary did you have words that you would see in print but never saying them out loud yes you did not you pronounced them differently uh, oh that's not what I thought you were asking I remember <laughs> what did you think I, I was asking I was thinking this I was like when you're a kid you're just like so and so is selfish they're selfish and later on I was like oh self ish <laughs> I just thought of it as one word, selfish. Right. It was, but I, I never sort of separated. Can I tell you what? I just got that just now. No, you did. <laughs> yes, I did. I never no, stopped did. to think. I mean, it's like a thing you know on a base level. Of course, that's that yes. must be what it means. Yeah. I never thought to break them down. Selfish. Those two syllables. Because you lean on the F, like selfish. They're yeah. selfish. Now, like, oh. now it seems like a very lazy word. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they were in a rush to finish the English language. Or I don't know, self selfish. Just, let's get this. We gotta finish up this dictionary. Let's just. We gotta. Let's. We gotta put this to print. I don't know, selfish. To print. Uh, uh. So wait, did you have words like that that you would see? Like a, a word that a lot of people I know had was uh, misled. They thought it was misled because they'd only seen it in print. Anybody here have that one? There's a, yeah. Don't say no. How dare you? I, I know there is one, but I can't think of it at the moment. I am so sorry. I remember, because more recently, biopic kind of uh, confused me. As yes. 
but that seems more recent. That does not seem like when I was when I was a That's kid. That's okay. But you would you would think bi biopic. Yes. Yes. I have a friend who insists upon saying. No, no, no. It's it's wrong. But it's I, wrong. But I quietly like acted like I knew it the whole time. Like as my life oh, kept going, I was like, yeah, yeah, biopic. You know. were, you, were you somebody that would you if you didn't know something would you ask a question or would you feel like you had to pretend to know what it was in order to kind of. Black. I hate to admit this, I would pretend. Yeah. I Me wish too. I was that hero that I was like, yeah, man, I just asked questions. And yeah. I was like, why, man? But. <laughs> That's not me. I'm, I'm a chicken and I just sort of hid under and sort of, you know. Did you ever get found out for not knowing a thing that you pretended to know? I think there have been some lyrics and things like that where, I, you know, I can't remember what they were, but I'm sure I've been called out on Lyrics it. Lyrics yeah. is a big one. Yeah, it's a huge one. Because people will give you that look of like, what? <laughs> yes. Hold on. What did you just say? Yeah. It's, it's really humiliating. And, I, and I'd laugh at the reaction and then in the inside I was just devastated. Yeah, you know? right. You know that U2 song, um, you walk away, walk away, walk away, walk away, I will fall. I used to think that was, I love New Wave. <laughs> <laughs> but, but who, Why would they sing, I love New Wave? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. You were definitely hearing walk away correctly. <laughs> I love New Wave and New Wave. And oh, wait, wave. you thought that part was, I yes. love New Wave? <laughs> I love New that Wave. That does not leave this room. <laughs> I love New Wave, I will follow. Yes, I will follow. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you two loves New Wave. <laughs> Awful. What is the song Like a Prayer about? The Madonna song? Yeah. That is about, okay, so here's the deal. Um, it's about using the Catholic religion for imagery. And... <laughs> What she is saying is that some of these images, some of this imagery is very, it could be sort of sexual, it could be intellectual, and what you need to understand, because you guys are always down on her, is that... <laughs> no, I don't... <laughs> okay. Front arm, Mr. Lady. Thank you. We're going to take another break during that break. We will get a location. that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns! Hey there, Spontaneous Nation listeners. It's me, Al A. Peterson, the smooth criminal, with some late night recorded in a hotel room ads. The kind of ads that don't wake up the people in the rooms next door to you so that no one gets in trouble. And f take it from me, as a criminal, you don't want to get in trouble. This episode of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins is brought to you by Lisa. Lisa, maybe you've heard of them. They're like the Tom Shoes or Warby Parker for mattresses. More on that later. Lisa's done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience just the way I can do away with your old life. And show you to a whole new world and a new identity. No one likes that awkward mattress showroom experience, I think, because it's awkward. If it was just a standard mattress showroom experience, even a great mattress showroom experience, I think no one would be complaining, but it is awkward. And Lisa's done away with that. They've created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Now, doorstep, maybe you don't have one. Maybe you live in an apartment building and you don't have a doorstep. That's just a figure of speech. But box the size of a mini fridge... That's the truth, brother. It's going to be compressed into a box the size of a mini fridge. You have to see it to believe it. This 10-inch mattress comes in all sizes and is crafted with three unique foam letter letters. Look, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little groggy. Um, I flew in another country today and uh, slept for 15 hours. Now I'm doing these ads because I forgot to do them earlier. And it's very late at night in a hotel. So, while the 10-inch mattress does not include three unique foam letters, I know it sounded like it would be a treasure hunt. You have to find the foam letters. You win a prize. Maybe you win a mini-fridge. 
Anyway, those uh, three unique foam layers, they include two inches of memory foam and two inches of a really cool latex-like foam called a vena that's perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. And the Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA and ships for free to anywhere in the USA and that Canada. Now, Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. Risk-free, that's something I could use in my line of work, something risk-free, but I am a professional criminal, so risks. And for every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter. Now, that's pretty amazing. It's not what I'm doing, helping people skirt the law. I like them, Lisa. The good people. The polar opposite of me. Go to leesa.com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout to get $75 off. Lisa, they're on the up and up. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nation, ladies and gentlemen. We have procured our location from Fred Armisen. We're ready to begin our improv first, just so as you know. In order to aid us in our storytelling, we will use three sound effects that will move us about in time. Let's say someone, well, let's say we want to go to a scene that is happening at the exact same time as the scene we're currently in. You will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there now. Same time, just a different place. Let's say someone is having a memory or we're learning how something came to be. You will hear this flash back sound effect. Now we're in the past, thanks to harps. <laughs> Let's say we want to return from that flashback to the present day or travel to the mysterious future. You'll hear this flash forward sound effect. As mysterious as the vibes themselves. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now I can reveal to you our location provided to us by Fred Armisen, and that location is... Madrid! Madrid! We take you now to Madrid! Um, excuse me, do you all have the, um, the jamón ibérico or are you sold out of it? Oh, we, we have the jamón ibérico. You have the jamón ibérico? Jamón ibérico. Jamón. You're not from around here, are you? Oh my God, how could you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, a, I'm an expat myself. Oh yeah? Yes. What, what, what's your name now? <laughs> I was Pat and now I am Antonio. <laughs> oh, just like Banderas. <laughs> Like An Antonio Banderas. I loved him in Evita. Uh, <laughs> now, come on. You know better than to pronounce it that way. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I'm from Wisconsin, and I don't have, I don't know, I can't speak Spanish or, you know, even Spanglish. Gosh, that's even harder because that's two at once. Yeah, not a know? thing, but yes. Okay. Um, but I was told that he, the hamon, whatever, the meat y'all make here is supposed to be real good. It's real good, yes. Oh, wait, cool. So can I have that? But I don't want any of the meat. You want the ham without the ham? Yeah, yeah, because um, I recently started a path towards veganism because I'm embracing my brother, sister, animal friends. Okay. And so I'd like to try your local specialties, but not the way you want them. What brings you, what brings you to Madrid, by the way? Hun, I gotta go. I gotta expand my horizons. Listen, if this is what you need to do, then you do it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to be a pat anymore, and so now my name's Roberto. <laughs> and it feels good. And I love that about yourself. And like me, for instance, what I'm dealing with is that like I need a thing. Sure. <laughs> Do you have any idea what, uh, what your thing might be? Um, I don't know. I just have always thought that like my opinions and like what I like is really great. So I was thinking maybe I could just be myself but in different places. <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time in Madrid not eating ham. 
really? Yes. What? You're gonna have a hard time in Wisconsin not eating ham. I know, why'd you think I left? Oh, sorry ma'am, did I get in your selfie? Oh no, 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 I, I wasn't, I, 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 this is crazy, but I was actually facing the lens out to the world. I know no one does that anymore, but I just, I gotta, oh gosh, sparks. fainted right in the ham shop. It's Antonio now. Did you used to know each other? <laughs> hey, babe, get him my Harley. <laughs> Don't you want to take a sweet ride with Pat? Big time, Pat. Big time. Where are we headed? <laughs> We're heading out there on the open road just oh, to see shit. what's out there. Oh my God, you're the answer to all my prayers. I didn't know what my thing was and now I know my thing is you. <laughs> I'll die if I ever lose you or if for some reason you decide you're tired of me and disappear. Hey, follow my bumper. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, we're monogamous. Oh, that... <laughs> no, you misunderstand. I'm taking you to jail. Oh. This guy's a wanted criminal. He ran a stop sign four years ago. Oh. <laughs> Miss, Miss, you gotta get off the floor. Oh, thanks for checking to see if I was okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not a CPA. <laughs> What a shock. Pat, I... It's Antonio now. <laughs> Julie. We had that one brief connection on my bike, then I went to jail. <laughs> then I moved to Madrid, opened a Hamon Iberico shop. <laughs> Completely changed my accent and my name. And now here we are reconnecting. It's the age-old story. <laughs> To be honest with you, I I went to so many different com countries and companies hoping, <laughs> hoping that this would happen, hoping that somehow I would step into a sales force and see you, step into a, a Paris, France and see you and, and we'd have that age old story come, to, come true, but I, I had finally given up. How did you find me here in Madrid? I, I didn't, I, I gave up. I heard Madrid's where you come when you don't know what your thing is anymore. Yeah, that's true for me at least. Yeah. yeah. I also just love meat. <gasps> I'm see like that was triggering for me cuz I'm really trying not to. So Okay. Pardon my abrupt gasp. <laughs> I mean, I I passed out. So Okay, twins. Gasp away. <laughs> oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. Look at him shaving Oh, that I'm meat. slicing the ham sensually for <laughs> oh. those of you with hope. You really are. This is like Patrick Swayze manipulating clay. <laughs> you must try the Iberico. Oh, don't it's wave so, it. It's so paper thin, I can't even see it. Am I holding it? Yes. It goes on a sandwich because the sandwich is things you slice. It's so true. I'm just going to let it flutter into my mouth like a feather. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm going to waft this one in the air toward you and try and catch it. I want to resist, but I can't. Oh, oh my God, it melted on my tongue like a salty snowflake. <laughs> they say each slice of ham is different. <laughs> What's your quote? I wasn't prepared for this one. Well, say the first thing that comes to your mind, this is live. Okay, I, I think I must have gotten the wrong line, but uh... Nope, sir, this, you're here now. Okay, um... Every slice of ham is different. <laughs> no, I Can I change it? <laughs> I, I don't think anyone you has know ever that said saying. that. I yes, certainly can't do. imagine someone somewhere so is saying times. that right now. 
right now. That's yeah. Somebody ludicrous. right now is saying right that. Now. Yeah. That's like someone's house is being robbed right now. Right now, somewhere, someplace, someone's saying that no two slices of ham are the same. I just, I don't buy it. Pat, this isn't like you. Da ding, 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 ding. <gasps> well. Look where I am. <gasps> a Hamon Iberico shop. Run by a gentleman I presume I've never met before. Certainly haven't been tracking to a different country over the course of several years. Well, look who's walked into my shop. A man that I clearly don't know. Despite the fact that he's held a vendetta against me for years, despite the fact that he did throw me in jail and I served my time, but he's been digging deeper to find something else on me, wherein I, there is not. Well, listen to what I just heard. A guy telling a story about a guy who must be lying because I know this third party is rotten to the core <laughs> because if you run one stop sign surely you've committed murder <laughs> listen to what I just heard <laughs> an incredibly ridiculous slippery slope that has no basis in fact whatsoever shoot me instead <laughs> alright <laughs> wait I just assumed that's where this was going <laughs> wait I can't let you die I just met you and you convinced me to start eating ham again. So you're basically my best friend. I'm looking at both of you, so both of you can take what, my compliment. And you, sir, I have a great deal of respect for a man who can fit that many spurs on a bear, pair of boots. Thank you. But I can't let you shoot my new friends. Not here in the land of Madrid. <laughs> oh, that you know how to say correctly. <laughs> I did a Rosetta Stone. <laughs> Wait a minute, are you saying you've been tracking him through multiple countries and you finally found him here? Yeah. What other countries did you visit? He's <laughs> gotta be here. Hi, what's going on? Welcome to Poland, man. <laughs> hey, can I introduce you to some Polish sausage? No, thank you, I've had it in America. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen, have you seen this guy? <clears throat> Pat? You know him? <laughs> yeah, he's more over in Western Europe. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hello. Welcome. <laughs> Would you like a hot dog? We just started him here. I'm a little groggy from my trip. Where am I? <laughs> the disease. <laughs> well, I've got news for you, mate. You've already got it. <laughs> Listen, you weird, soot-covered creature. <laughs> get away from thing? him, mate. You'll get old time of cockney disease. <laughs> Wait, what? Why you simultaneously <laughs> turn cockney and become old? <laughs> That's actually not how it's pronounced. <laughs> it's named after a doctor <laughs> whose name was Alzheimer's Cockney Disease. <laughs> was Cockney his male name? The one in the middle? His male name? What other countries have you been to? <laughs> Hello? So, so cold. Oh, you don't like the temperature in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> Should we just assume we're back here now? Yeah, right, okay. yeah. uh, <laughs> I can't believe you tracked me down here, Javert. <laughs> well, I did. 
No one's above the law. And you. Me? Oh, gosh, what? Saying I can't just shoot people. You know I'm a police person, right? Oh, well. It's kind of our thing. Yeah, I know that more than anyone here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Including the audience. <laughs> well, are they particularly harsh some people from Wisconsin? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, they don't like us, us cheese heads, you yeah. know. <laughs> but you're a little out of your jurisdiction, Javert. Oh, so I'm not operating within the strict lines of the law? No, you are not, sir. This is my Hamon Iberico shop. Let's... And I am Antonio now. Are you? Well, let's just say, Antonio, I pull a little California roll through the laws of Madrid. Oh, were you in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, welcome to Japan. Oh. Is there anything I can help you with, sir? Yes. Have you seen this man? No, I have not. Sushi? <sighs> I'm going to have to start going to companies now. <laughs> <clears throat> Procter & Gamble, how can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> this may seem weird. <laughs> we, get, we get them all, sir. All right. Oh, do you get the one where people think that your logo is Satanist thing? Yes, yes. Okay. And that we do worship Satan here, so that's, let me just clear that up right now, yes. You have just settled a bet for me, thank okay. you. Okay, all right. That's not why I'm Oh, here. really? Okay. Have you seen this gentleman? Pat? <laughs> do you have any idea of his most recent whereabouts? Last I heard, he was running a Hamon Iberico shop in Madrid. Whoa! <laughs> thank you, Procter & Gamble. I love Pringles. <laughs> they make Pringles? Procter & Gamble, of course Procter & Gamble makes Pringles. God damn it. Once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for the circuitous route you had to take to get here. It sounds actually exciting. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I mean, I guess I went everywhere looking for you too, but I don't think we need to see that. And no, I think no, we're good. No, for reals. We're good. For reals. And I went looking for something to just like be involved in, so I think we're all getting what we wanted. I'm clearly not getting what I want. <laughs> but like, maybe if you shift your expectations a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. What if, what if, in order to right this old wrong, we get on what I assume is your scooter, because this is Madrid, and he artfully, respectfully stops at a stop sign here, and you can watch it and feel satisfied with that kill your murder urge? It's tricky, because it's a different class of vehicles, so the test you have to take is not exactly the same, but... That's as close as you're gonna get, Javert. <laughs> All right. Whee! All right, let... <laughs> okay, so the only thing you have to do is get on the scooter and not run a stop sign. Okay, remember, here it's gonna say Parar. <laughs> Yes, I've lived here for several years. I speak Spanish. I just, okay. Right. How'd you get your handles up so high and wide? <laughs> I, I custom made this bike. There's no time to tell that That's story right now. That's one tough know. looking scooter. It's great. <laughs> Got ape hangers on there. <laughs> All, right. All right, I'm watching. I know the temptation's strong, but please try to resist it. Here we go. Oh, she's getting closer to The cobblestones are so bumpy. Oh, cobblestones. <laughs> you Madrileno cobblestones. You're you. close to the stop sign. <laughs> Horror. Oh, I can't stop. I got to keep on going. Oh, oh, oh. I'll get you. I'll get you. Fuck you, Javis. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called Madrid.
Thanks again to CISO for sponsoring today's episode. CISO is an on-demand streaming comedy service, anytime, anywhere. Check out all the original series, quotable classics, next day, late night, stand-up specials, and more. CISO is only $3.99 a month, and it's ad-free. Start your one-month free trial now. Available at CISO.com, the iOS app store, Google Play Store, Roku, Xbox, and Amazon Video. There is a creature that stalks your inbox while you sleep. The Ear Wolf. Once every fortnight, this lupine beast sneaks across the internet, carrying only a newsletter featuring exciting podcast highlights, fan art, live tour dates, in studio photos of stars like Mel Brooks and Susan Sarandon, and sneak peeks of podcasts yet to come. If you want these valuable treasures, all you have to do is invite it in by going to Earwolf.com and subscribing to its email newsletter. And then wait for the Earwolf to visit. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com 